Let's learn how to graph a rational function. It's also sometimes called a reciprocal function. Um, and that is because the parent equation looks like this, one over x. If you recall, a reciprocal is when you flip a fraction. So instead of a basic equals x, it's one over x. We're gonna start with making an xy table here so you can see where the points come from. When you actually do this on homework and on tests, you do not need to do as many points as we're about to do, just this one time only. Okay, we're starting with x is zero, then one, two, three, four. So let's think about plugging it in to this equation. We'd get one over zero, one over one, one over two, one over three, one over four. Well, most of these are just what they look like, one half, one third, one fourth. One divided by one is one. One divided by zero, you can't do, you can't divide by zero. This is called an undefined value. And we'll get to that more in just a second. Let's graph these points so far. If we kept going five, six, seven, eight, we'd get one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth. It'd get closer and closer and closer to the X axis. It seems like we need some other numbers for X. So let's try some like this, one half for X, one third for X. If you plug this into the equation, one over one half, dividing by a fraction is hard, but what dividing actually means is how many times does one half fit into one? It fits in twice. So one divided by a half is two. One divided by a third is the same idea. How many times does one third fit into one? It fits in three times. So we would get three for an answer. So one half, two, one third, three. We can see it's forming this curve where it's getting really close to the y-axis and it's getting really close to the x-axis. It's never actually gonna touch zero because you can't divide by zero and therefore you also can't get an answer of zero. It forms something called an asymptote. An asymptote is an invisible line. It's not actual points. We usually just draw it as a dotted line, but it's a boundary on the graph that our function approaches and gets closer and closer and closer to, but never actually touches. This graph is a little weird because it's actually in two pieces. We're only halfway done. Let's picture for a second, if I had plugged in negative one, I would have gotten negative one for an answer. If I plugged in negative two, I would have gotten negative one half. I could have done all of these as negatives. So I would get a curve that looks like this, getting really close to the X there and the Y axis there. So now our graph is totally done. You may want to pause the video and write this all down. Now it's not reasonable to come up with all of those points for every single equation, especially when we start moving it left, right, up or down. So here's what I would require for your parent function. I would like you to know for the parent function that there are two asymptotes. So you start by drawing the dotted lines at zero and at zero. Then I would like you to have two points. We'll call these the locator points. They are not the vertex or vertices, but they're important starting points. One of our points here had been at one, one, and another point had been here at negative one, negative one. Then I want you to draw the curve getting really close to the y-axis and really close to the x-axis, but not actually touching it. Same here, really close there and really close there. Please do not shape it like this. It is not square, it is a curve. Something I want you to notice to keep in mind for when we transform this graph in a second, right from where these asymptotes cross, 
our locator point is over one, up one. Our other locator point is over one, down one. So um, that relative position will be the same no matter where the asymptotes go. So here is a transformed rational function. You can still see the one over x part, but we have a couple other things happening. So the number stuck on the end moves it up or down. If it's minus three, it will go down three. The number right next to the x, if it helps, imagine that there's parentheses here. Um, it wouldn't change anything if I drew parentheses there. This moves it left and right, and it does the opposite of what it seems like. Plus two seems like it would go in the positives, but it's actually gonna go in the negatives, so it'll go left two. The first thing you need to draw this graph is to actually draw the part that's not really part of the graph. You need to draw the asymptotes. So normally our vertical asymptote had been at zero, but now I want it to move left two. So now this vertical asymptote is at x equals negative two. Normally our horizontal asymptote had been here on the x-axis, but I want it to move down three. So now it will be down here at negative three, and the equation for that is y equals negative three. Notice where our asymptotes cross. They cross right here. Our two locator points are gonna be over one, up one, from where the asymptotes cross. And they're always in those same quadrants unless there's like a reflection, like a negative on there. So we'll just draw the curve close to that asymptote and close to that one. Same here, close to both of those. And then just look at the graph to see where these ended up. This looks like it's at 